like really calm in this <laughs> In this um, wrap up is because I fucking loved everything I read this month, okay? Like, <laughs> there's nothing for me to rant about. Oh, uh, my cats are not gonna start doing shit right now. Yeah, they are. They are. Are we gonna play now? I gotta play. Hello everyone, my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And welcome to my August wrap up. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Monica and I like to talk about books. I primar primar primarily read sci-fi and um, yeah, that's it. Primarily I read sci-fi. I like to read adult sci-fi, sometimes I read YA sci-fi, but mostly I read adult sci-fi. And I like my spooky book every now and then, as you'll see in this haul not haul in this wrap up i read 13 books in august well technically i read 12 books in august but one of the books that i read in the month that comes before august july which i kept calling june in my last wrap up i left for this month because it was part of a secret tbr and i finished it the last day of july so i just thought you know what i'm just gonna wrap it up with the other books because you're not gonna see it until august so that, that was a long-winded. Everything is long-winded here. Welcome. So let's just get started because we have 13 books to go through. Either way, I will leave um, timestamps down below if you want to know my thoughts about certain books. And also, I will link up here where you can see the vlogs where I read some of these books because they were part of secret TBR projects that I vlogged my reactions to. So let's just get started. The first book that I finished in the month of August, which I actually finished in July, but you know, is Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Hyperion by Dan Simmons tells the story of these, um, is it seven? Yeah, seven pilgrims, you know, going on a pilgrimage to these time tombs that are thought to be controlled by a creature called the Shriek or the Shrike or something and you get to hear each one of their stories as they um, make their way to these time tombs in this planet uh, that I don't remember the name of. I wanted, I was gonna be like, Eric, no, that's not the right one, but anyway, um, this is very much told in the Canterbury Tales style where you get one story per character and each story tells you a little bit more of why they're there and you find out through the stories what their connection to the time tombs are. I like some of the stories better than the others but overall I think that this is a great sci-fi read. I think it's a beautiful written book. I give it five out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I read it in one day in one sitting. Well not one sitting. I like stopped and read other things. But yeah the thing I liked about this book the most was that it was very character driven and um we we didn't get a lot of world building not necessarily you know we didn't get a lot of science from the sci-fi aspect we just got character interactions which i thought was really good there is also a mystery in the book um there is, seems to be somebody in there that is trying to start an intergalactic war between ai and humans and it's just such a wonderful wonderful book I highly recommend it for those of you that are wanting to dip your toes into classic sci-fi but are like not wanting to read Neuromancer or Dune because I understand why you don't want to read those even though Dune is one of my favorite books. I think that they're kind of hard to get into but I think Hyperion is actually an easier read, if you will. The next book I read was A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martine. I had such a roller coaster of emotions when I read this book. I was like all over the place. And um, in the end, I did give it five out of five stars simply because it talks a lot about what it's like to be an immigrant in a place where you know you're not supposed to love it and yet you do. I don't know if that makes sense, but in, in the end, this is the story of a woman and she is from a inter like uh, she's from a, a station in 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 the galaxy and she is sent as an ambassador to this empire that basically takes over all 
planets and stations and it's looking it's it's basically looking for um places to take over but not in a violent way it's just basically like oh yeah we're gonna annex you we're gonna annex you you know the whole now you pay taxes to us we take what we need from you etc but this ambassador this person whose name i cannot for the life of me remember um i'm very bad at remember char character name but the main character she's sent there and she has to make sure that they don't annex her station to the empire and not only that but she's sent there because the previous ambassador was killed under very suspicious circumstances my cat is in the litter box what is wrong with my cats today it's gonna be fun to edit out oh well, well my cat is doing her thing i feel very fancy with my hair so if you see me talking all fancy like it's because i feel fancy because of my hair so one of my cats is this from my couch the other cat is in the litter box and she hates the litter box so it's like a fucking disaster so after the kitty break the next book i read for that vlog that vlog was called uh books uh sci-fi books recommended to me by my friends and they were all five stars so yes i did give a, mem a memory called empire five stars and and the next book i read was sarah pinkster's we are satellites this book tells the story it's a soft sci-fi about a world where we can get implants in our head that basically help us multitask like for example i could be listening to a conversation while filming this video or listening to an audiobook and it's just supposed to enhance the way we use our brains except what happens if something goes wrong and what happens to the people that are not able to get this device for whatever reason here we have a, a very interesting representation of someone with a, a chronic illness and that cannot get the device and where does that leave them and where does that leave the people that choose not to get their device this is the story about two mothers and their children and the struggles they go through because of this device this is such a wonderful read it's a very comforting read the the story is told in different um povs we get the moms the two moms so um not sophie uh what are their names val and julie we get val and julie's point of view who are the moms and one of them has the implant one of them does not and then we get the son david so we get the point of view of david who is the son and we also get the point of view of sophie who is the daughter who has a chronic illness disability not sure what the correct term is i'm sorry but um it's a very wonderful book i recommend that everybody pick it up and i did i went through hell and high water to get this cover because i like it better than the new cover um i think this one is really beautiful i love the colors and the story was just great so really good start to my reading month i think <laughs> My next project involved all these books. Well, not all. It's not, I'm talking like there's 10 of them. Involved these three books. And I wanted to read sci-fi science fiction books written by women named Monica. Because I'm named Monica and I wanted to write, to read about these books. The first one, um, I'll leave the video up here if you want to see all my like in-depth thoughts of, on each book. But the first book I read was Bounders by Monica Kessler. This is a middle grade sci-fi fantasy, sci-fi fantasy, no, sci-fi adventure about these children who are bred to basically bound. What bound means is travel through the stars without the need for machinery. Now, what is interesting is all of these children are neurodivergent and the, the, when they turn 12, they get to go to the Space Academy to learn to hone their abilities. They're divided up into groups and the teens have to fight. And I really love the way the children are written in this story. The reason I like middle grade more than YA is because I feel that in middle grade, children are written like children while in YA, children are written like adults. So I just think that their interactions were really cool. I really loved all of the characters. There's one character who she is nonverbal. She doesn't communicate. She doesn't seem to understand. And yet she's seen as an integral and important part of the team. So I really enjoyed that. 
I think this book would be great not just for children but for adults also. The story is really interesting. Everything about this book is great. It's a series. I already have the second book. That's how much I loved it. I gave it a 5 out of 5. And it's very shiny. <laughs> I feel like I'm blinding you at the moment. <laughs> the next book that I read was in between um, the Monica books because I was a little bit of science fictioned out I really wanted to do to read something different and I had heard great things about this novella called Come Closer by Sarah Graham <laughs> So Come Closer by Sarah Graham is the story of a supposed or apparent um, possession of this woman she has the picture-perfect life with the picture-perfect husband and everything is great until she apparently starts to be possessed by a demon. And then shit goes down, you know, shit hits the proverbial fan, per se. Um, I gave this book three and a half stars simply because I didn't like the ending and you know, for me, the ending is paramount so I just didn't, it, it wasn't a bad ending, I just didn't like it. This, the novella is very short, it just tells the story of um, the main character fighting this demon and at the same time sometimes giving in because the demon kind of represents a, a repressed part of her femininity that she has lost in her pursuit of perfection, of this perfect marriage, of this perfect life. And it's really interesting. I just didn't like the ending. The ending kind of bummed me the fuck out. I'm not telling you if it's happy or sad or whatever. I just know that it wasn't the ending that I wanted. And yeah, and also it's really short and there wasn't much for me to go on. I didn't quite enjoy it as much as I thought I would. So yeah, but it was still a pretty good read. I would still recommend that you pick it up, especially if to break up some of the like if you're reading too much of something or if you want a quick read to get you out of a reading slump definitely a novella that i would recommend that you pick up just know that if you're sensitive to um horror this is def this is definitely a horror novella i'm like <laughs> this is this is not soft horror this is this is pretty out there it's not gory it's not gory but it definitely touches on really emotional and um, tragic aspects of life and you know and and, and 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 I will throw a trigger warning out there for sexual assault so that that was that one the next book I read was um, girl under glass uh, by Monica Enderly Pierce this is a sci-fi romance thriller in space and at the beginning, I was not so much into it, but then by the end, the more I think about this book, the more I like it. I do think that there should have been an editing process. I think that the writing isn't as good as other books that I've read, but I'm interested in the story, and I'm definitely going to continue with the story. This story tells the story of Rachel Prime. Rachel lives in a like in a colony of humans that are super religious because after the aliens invaded the the world basically went into this chaos of religious like zealousness because they thought okay so if if we can't trust science you know the the, the aliens because in the beginning the aliens were kind of fighting with the humans um and then they turned on the humans so the humans turned to god and Rachel apparently, she was definitely sexually assaulted and she conceived a little girl. However, before her parents died, Rachel's parents told her they'll come back for you. So one day, one of these, oh, I'm never going to get this. Anenre, Anenre, those are the aliens, which are not really aliens. They're just basically augmented humans. Show, well, well, they're aliens, okay? They, they're not augmented. Like, it wasn't like they were created. They, they, they are aliens they, they come from another planet one day an, 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 uh, <laughs> an onenre shows up 
and he's hurt and she's a medic and due to her code of conduct she has to help him so she does um it's a romance they fall in love and um rachel must do everything she can to protect her daughter from the evil um god fearing cult i don't know if i just sold this book to you if or if i just turned you off to it just know that the writing isn't that great but the story is really there and the romance aspect um what i didn't like is that it's very alpha male i am the alpha and you are the only one that can get me to feel things and stuff like that that's really but that's like a little part of the book it's mostly based on rachel being a badass and doing everything she can for her daughter so i actually think that if you're on the fence about this give it a read give it a read because i think that is it's actually a really good book yeah i think it's a good book how many stars did i give this i think i gave this like 3.75 so i don't know I, I i liked it in the end you know it wasn't it wasn't everything i ever hoped for in a book but it it got me intrigued now the last book that i read for the monica series is the girl in the road by monica Byrne, which is funny because it's rachel prime and then monica Byrne. It, it was very confusing i kept calling the main character in girl under glass monica it was it was very strange the girl in the road is a very strange novel about a young woman that wakes up one day and she has a bunch of snake bites on her chest and she is trying to escape Mumbai. We don't know why she's trying to escape Mumbai all the way to Ethiopia. She's trying to travel this road, which is made of pure energy. And it says that nobody can really survive this road. So she's trying to get there. And along that, we have another point of view of a girl who is trying to escape Ethiopia uh, because her parents were enslaved there. Um, this book I gave two stars to. Um, the, the writing was very confusing. I kept getting the POVs confused. I wasn't sure who was who, what was what. And also there is a very gruesome scene of an adult performing a sexual act on a child and it's seen as a good thing. That's my thing. If it had been condemned and if it had been like, Oh no, this is wrong. This shouldn't happen. Okay, then I would have been like, all right, I can deal with that. But it seemed like a kind of spiritual experience. And I just don't think that... No, I just don't think so. You know, so um, sadly, this was a big letdown. I think this was the biggest letdown of the month. Again, after all of this sci-fi, I was a little bit science fictioned out. So what did I do? I picked up a Neil Gaiman book. And that book is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Now this is the story about a man who returns to his hometown to, uh, for a funeral. I believe it's a funeral of his father. Of his father. I think it's the funeral of his father. I don't remember. But anyway, he returns to his hometown and when he returns there, he starts to get like glimpses back of his childhood of things he hasn't thought about in years, especially a moment in his life where he met a girl down at the end of the lane and he meets her mother, her grandmother, and it is very beautifully written. It's wonderful. It's I love Neil Gaiman's writing. It takes a while for you to get into the story, but the moment you're in it, like you're in it. I love that he does the same thing as like most of my favorite authors where there's very little world building. Nothing gets explained to you. Nothing is told. Like at the end, you're like, oh, so where do these people come from? And why is this happening? You don't know that. You just are along for the ride and i really really appreciate that in this book i also love the main characters in the book so there's a character called letty i really love her i love her family i love all the whimsical magical elements in this although i will warn you this is definitely on the magical side of things there is no doubt that this is uh Neil Gaiman's story where magic and real life come together. I love the ending. It was really heartbreaking and yet really beautiful at the same time. And I think this book deals a lot with that idea of going back home 
and never really being able to go back home anybody that is an adult out there you know that no matter how much you go back to where you used to live where you where you grew up you go back to your parents house once you're an adult there is this part of your childhood that you wish you could go get back but you can never get back this book deals with that and i just thought it did so in such a lovely whimsical adorable way i'm definitely i mean everything i read about with uh, written by neil gaiman for me is like five stars so this is another five stars also if you think that i am like really calm in this <laughs> in this um wrap up is because i fucking loved everything i read this month okay like <laughs> there's nothing for me to rant about i don't i don't know what to tell you i'm like i i'm, I'm filming and i'm like i feel like this wave of calm like <laughs> it's because i didn't hate anything i didn't even dnf anything so uh there you go the ocean at the end of the lane by neil gaiman then i did another secret tbr because you know the name of the game in this channel recently and this was re reading books by authors that i had read a book of that i really loved that i gave five stars to and i was scared to read the second book because usually can you capture lightning in the bottle twice well spoiler alert all of these authors did so the first book i read and it's probably in the running for being my favorite book that i've read this entire year is the echo wife by sarah gailey the echo wife by sarah gailey is a sci-fi novel about cloning there is this woman who works in um uh cloning research and she has figured out how to make clones but they're they're usefulness is not you know to clone someone and then have this clone live out a life no no it's for example for a president traveling to a very complicated situation in a country where they might get assassinated so they make a decoy clone that is only supposed to work for that they um program the clones so that they're more malleable amicable they're able to follow orders and not only that i like that this book talks about like if you were to for example create a clone of me she wouldn't have tattoos she wouldn't have dyed hair she wouldn't have this scar that i have so what do you do if you want to really make someone look like someone else you have to recreate every broken bone every scar every tattoo everything about them I thought that that was really, really interesting. And the way they explain it is kind of gruesome and mean and cruel. Um, but I love the main character in this story. I thought she was such an interesting character. I can't, I cannot remember her name. Evelyn. So Evelyn is the scientist and um, she's going through a divorce because her husband decided to marry her clone. And I will leave that there for you because I want you to experience this book with as little information as possible because this book is obvious it's it's a thriller it's a thriller it's a sci-fi thriller and I just want you to know that I love all the women characters in the book I love how Sarah Gailey writes women relationships like the relationships between women and I like how we get glimpses of the past of of, of Evelyn's past and what makes her so different from Martine, who is the clone. And there are twists and turns, and it's really good. And I definitely recommend that you pick this book up. If you take anything away from my review today, is that you should really be reading The Echo Wife. You should also read Magic for Liars, but I read that last year, so we're not gonna talk about that. The next book i read for that secret tbr was foe i had originally i had originally read i'm thinking of ending things by ian reed and i decided to read foe which is his sci-fi thriller i don't think it's a thriller but it was marketed as a thriller and i think that's why this book didn't do as well as it could have because i think this book is really amazing oh and if you didn't guess i gave this five out of five stars and i'm and i gave foe five out of five stars um Bo tells the story of this isolated couple. It's a man and a woman. They live in a farm. I said barn in my original review. They live in a farm. And one day this man comes and he's like, congratulations, one of you has won the lottery to go into space. Because again, we, we have come to the conclusion that we're eventually going to have to go to space. 
and we're doing all of these things so that we can prepare humanity for that so one of you needs to go but you're going to be gone so long that we're going to leave a replica of your spouse with you so that when you know that so that you're not so the other person is not alone and from there you get this creepy feeling that something's not right something's not right I've heard from a lot of people that they saw the twist coming like really fast and I agree with you I saw the twist coming but that didn't diminish the fact that I enjoyed this book so much and I think that that's what's really interesting about this book is that you can see the twist coming you can guess what is happening and yet the experience of reading this is it is incredible it's very enjoyable I, well I don't know if enjoyable is the right word because it's actually kind of freaky <laughs> it's really freaky and I think that's what I love about Ian Reed's writing a lot of people get freaky not get freaky <laughs> a lot of people get freaked out by um Jeff Vandermeer I read Annihilation I didn't get freaked out by Annihilation I just found it kind of meh you know and I think Ian Reed is that writer which can create such tension with just a few words on a page I think it's amazing I, I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not picking up foe if you really want to be creeped out I mean like if you if you want to read a happy book I guess this would not be the book for you but if you want to read a book that really gets under your skin and you're like ugh, I feel so creeped out and 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 wrong then this is definitely the book for you and i think ian reed is a writer to watch honestly i think he's an amazing writer and the last book for that video was midwinter blood by marcus sedgwick which actually turned out to be a sort of soft sci-fi this um book tells the story about merle and eric see i can remember sometimes the name merle and eric keep meeting up throughout time but the interesting thing about this book is that we start in the year 2073 and then we go back in time to all the lifetimes that they have met until we understand why they keep meeting up and this is a short book it's a lovely book it's a book that I recommend for anybody that is I wouldn't say a romantic although I, I am kind of a romantic at heart but I would recommend this book for somebody that wants to experience a different kind of story. I don't think there's anything like it in booktube. I think Cloud Atlas, I've heard, is the closest thing. But I just think this book is beautiful. I love the idea of things repeating through time and the fact that we have no control over it. And I like that Merle and Eric aren't always meeting as lovers. Sometimes they're just friends. Sometimes they're um, father and daughter. Sometimes they're mother and son, brother and sister. But their souls keep intertwining. And for one reason or another, they keep leaving each other. So you get to find out that reason. And the book starts with the ending because it's the... Like, it's the it's the closest we have to the actual timeline and then we go back and then we return to the future to find out if Merle and Eric finally get together I'll let you figure that out for yourself oh I'm sorry there was one more book usually I do these three these um secret tbrs in threes but i did four and i read project hail mary by andy weir and i absolutely love this book this book is so much fun oh my god this book is about an astronaut and he wakes up in this spaceship with no memory why he's there but he knows that he is supposed to be saving the earth but he doesn't know why or from what and we start to figure out this story along with him we figure out that he's actually a a not a professor he's a teacher he's a high school teacher and the the fate of earth rests on his shoulders why is he here and um what is he supposed to do it's a lot of fun this book is a lot of fun i said it before andy weir writes really good male protagonist in isolated 
spaces. In the beginning, you might think that sounds a lot like The Martian, but I assure you that the character, Grace, I call him Grace because they call him Grace throughout the book. Um, Grace is so different from Mark Watney. I think Mark Watney was way more prepared to be out in space than Grace was. And I think Grace is more, much more reliable. I thought Mark Watney to be, if, if you don't know, Mark Watney is from The Martian. I found him to be a little bit cold at times because he's a scientist and he just, well, he, I mean, Grace is also a scientist, but he's, he acts much more on instinct and love than, than Mark Watney. I really enjoyed this book. It has such a, uh, the ending is not my my cup of tea, but I loved it nonetheless and I just really like the journey that I took with this character. It is true that I am not a scientific mind oriented person, so a lot of the science of the book goes over my head. The good thing is that after a paragraph of science, you get the uh, cliff notes at the bottom of what basically he's doing. And it's a lot of fun. I, I loved it. I love the, the twist that it has. It has one of the best twists that I can think of and I don't want to give it away because I want you to experience it just like I experienced it. And I will say that I think that the audiobook for this is the way to go because there's a lot of sound effects and it's really a lot of fun. So yeah, I read uh, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. That a reading kind of slump I was very happy with everything that I had read and I just really didn't want to pick anything up but I was scrolling through script and I found The Bear by Adrian Kravick now The Bear is a kind of post-apocalyptic sci-fi where yeah humanity has gone, gone died humanity is gone and there's only two people left a father and his daughter and it's more about survival and coming of age than anything, but this book really packs a really poignant punch. It's very lyrical, very beautiful, very human returns to the wild sort of thing. Um, I liked that it didn't focus too much on the survival, although I will warn you, if you are sensitive to um, killing wild animals you know, for consumption, you know, to eat, um, then, then just be careful going into this book because I was, I, I, I know many of you know I'm, I'm a vegan and I was a little bit taken aback. Um, not, I, I'm not saying that it was wrong. I'm just saying that I was like, ooh, so we're skinning the fish now. Okay, <laughs> thank you for explaining that to me. Um, but this is a beautiful story about a father and a daughter and trying to survive what seems to be the end of the world. And, um... It, it reminded me of Station Eleven in the what are you willing to sacrifice and what are you willing to fight for um, once everything you know and you love has gone. Uh, I love the isolation aspect of this and again I love that return to nature. There is um, some magical elements to this. Um, I don't want to spoil you for what but it's definitely a man returns to the wild sort of story and the only sci-fi that it has is that we know that this is post-apocalyptic we see that there used to be cities but it's so long ago or they're so destroyed that nature has taken over and i really enjoy those kinds of books and i really enjoy the concept of that so if that's something that you are into i suggest you pick this book up and that's it those are the 13 books that i read this month i am very glad that i got through this video without like going on a rant on how much i had read hate red rising i still hate red rising i was talking about it with someone else <laughs> for somebody that likes sci-fi i really don't like red rising but um anyway i read a lot of a lot of books i'm really enjoying doing these um secret dvrs where i pick books that i want to read and especially books out of my um physical shelves because i have a lot of not a lot of them but i have quite a few that i haven't read and yeah let me know which uh let me know if you, which of these books you're most interested in down below and for now, I bid you adieu, and I will see you all in another galaxy far, far away. Bye! Was that weird? I'm weird.